Welcome back. We're at the Freedom Ball here in Washington. President Trump is on his way to visit each of the inaugural balls tonight. We'll be showing his arrival when it happens. It should happen soon. The Reverend Samuel Rodriguez is an evangelical pastor, Assemblies of God, and the leader of the National Hispanic Christian Leadership Conference. At this morning's inauguration, he gave a reading from the Sermon on the Mount, the Gospel of Matthew. Here's part of it. God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. And God blesses you when people mock you and persecute you and lie about you and say all sorts of evil things against you because you are my followers. The Reverend Rodriguez joins us now. Good to see you. Thank you for having me. So I felt for you watching this because you're speaking not simply for yourself, but on behalf of, in some sense, for God. That's a heavy charge. Were you nervous? Was I nervous? Nervous would be an understatement. <laughs> I, kid, I kid you not. It was overwhelming. I was actually speaking to myself. I prayed, and I said, Samuel, calm down. It was overwhelming. So how did you write the prayer? What inspired you? How, I've always wondered this. Are you in the shower, taking a okay. run? Where does the kernel of the prayer come to you? My daily devotions. So I, in, in my daily devotions, in my time of prayer and meditation and looking at God's Word, and then you know, I was debating. What's the objective here? And the, trend, the, the inaugural committee was unbelievably generous. Sometimes they script. They actually tell you what to pray or what to share out of Scripture. This is not, so I, on this occasion, whatever God gave you, wow. So Matthew, so wait, they said that to you? Yeah, indeed. Whatever, whatever the wording was, quote, whatever the Spirit places in your heart. Now, it went through a vetting process wow. post facto. So it had to be approved after the fact. Not one pushback on any of us who prayed, by the way. So it was amazing. And Matthew chapter 5 emerged. The issue of light and darkness. Are we going to continue to exacerbate the darkness, the division, the strife, the discord in America? Or why not come together and turn on the light? The, the most powerful light, of course, as you know, in the, in the spectrum is when all the colors of the spectrum converge. Yes. That's light, the most powerful light. If we all come together, we turn on the light, darkness has to flee. That's the clarion call today in the prayer. Huh. So what, that's the, that was the core message of your prayer today. Indeed. And God blesses those that are marginalized, those that are suffering, the poor, the hungry, but even those that are mocked and criticized for believing in Him. Our Christian, our Judeo-Christian value system, without a doubt, has been under assault. Unprecedented historical assault. Religious liberty will emerge as the quintessential civil rights issue of the 21st century in America. It behooves us to stand up and defend our right to exercise our religious beliefs. It's horrifying it's even an issue, that it's even under assault, but are you confident that President Trump, who may or may not share your specific beliefs, right. will protect you from assaults against religious liberty? I believe you the conduit of Supreme Court nominations, uh, subsequently approved by the Senate. I do believe that religious liberty will be protected, at least for my generation, and God please, for my children and my children's children's sake. I am concerned. Again, Moral relativism, cultural decadence, the pushback on mores and absolutes right. like never before. Dorothy, we're not in Kansas anymore. But there's a difference between people leading libertine lives and trying to force you not to practice your religion. Absolutely. Right? So that's the threat to religious liberty. The threat, right. I mean, we, we're not advocating for a theocracy. Of course not. Right. We want to provide equal space. It's the marketplace of ideas. We want to protect religious liberty for all. But the idea of pushing back against a Christian ethos, or a Judeo-Christian value system for that matter. And it's not hyperbole, by the way, it's not rhetoric, it's not conspiracy theory. We've seen it in the past few years. So now, through this president, through the Supreme Court appointments, we believe religious liberty will be protected, at least for my generation. Yes, forcing people to violate their own core beliefs. Unbelievable, to, to sacrifice truth on the altar of political or cultural expediency. Reverend, great to see you. Thank you for Thank having you me. Thank you for doing that.